vexation, come I, with complaint against my daughter Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius. This man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander. And this man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. I beg the ancient prim of Athens. As she is mine, I may dispose of her, which shall be either to this gentleman or to her death. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman, but so is Lysander's. I would my father look, but with my eyes. I know not by what powers I may bold, but I beseech you that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case, if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death, or to abjure forever the society of men. So will I live, so die, my lord, ere I will my virgin patent up unto his lordship. Take time to pause, and by the next new moon be prepared to die, or else to wed Demetrius. Lysander, yield thy grace title to my servant. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Do you marry him? <laughs> Scornful Lysander! My love is more than his. My fortune's ever way is fairly ranked. Demetrius, come. And for you, fair Hermia, look you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will, or else the law of Athens yields you up to death. Hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt of great revenue. <clears throat> From Athens there are most seven leagues. There, gentle Hermia, may marry thee, and to that place the sharp Athenian law can, cannot pursue us. Steal forth thy father's house, tomorrow in the wood will we stay for thee. My good Lysander, I swear to thee by Cupid's strongest bow, tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. Good morrow. God speed, fair Helena. Call you me fair. Your eyes are low stars, and your tongue sweet air, more tunable than lark shepherd's ear. Oh, teach me before are you so the most you had to I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. By your frown, teach my smile such skill. Take comfort, he no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. Tomorrow night, through Athens gates, have we devised a seal. And in the wood, there my Lysander and myself shall meet, and then from Athens turn away our eyes. Farewell, sweet playfellow. Keep word, Lysander. We must stir our sight from lover's food till morrow, deep at night. I will hurry me up. Helena, adieu. Through Athens I am thought as fair as she. But what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight. Then to the woods will be tomorrow night pursue her. Herein mean I to have a sight thither and thither. Smile when I a fat and bean-fed horse beguile. 
The wisest aunt, telling the saddest tale, sometime for a three-foot stool mistake me. <laughs> then I slip from her bum, down topple she. A groom, here comes Oberon. I hear my mistress. <laughs> You'll look by moonlight, I'll take him here. What jealous Oberon? Very skip head. I post one kid that in company. Why, old my dear, come from the farthest step of India. I thought the bouncing Amazon to Theseus must be ready. Any kind to give me that joy and prosperity? How camp so does for shame, Titania? They answer my coat with a letter, knowing I know that I love to these views. You have the forge of the jealousy. Now since the middle summer spring met me on pale and dale. Forest or me, the flow the winds have sucked up from the sea's contagious fog. Which on the land have every pelt and ruin made so proud. Three of them grown their constant. And although this is this, this temperature is in the seasons, all take their want of their ways, and the maid's love not knows that which is which. Do you amend it then? I do but beg a little change in the boy to be my henchman. His mother was a vulture in my order. But she being mortal, a fat boy did die, and for the sake dear of the boy, and for her sake I will not part with him. Give me that boy and I will go with thee. Not for that day. There is the way. Thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. I didn't put luck come hither. Doth thou remember that time I saw it? Young Cupid's fiery shaft clenched in the chaste beams of watery moonlight? I fell upon the little western flower, now purple with love's wounds. Fetch me that flower. The juice of it will sleep in the eyelids lay, will make any man or woman madly dull upon the next up creature that it sees. I'll put a girl round about the earth in forty minutes. Have me the juice of this flower, I'll streak Titania's eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. <clears throat> I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and where is Fair for me? Though one else slay, the other slay me. You draw me, you hard heart of damage. Do I speak to you fair? Do I tell you in the plainest? I do not love you. And even for that, do I love you the I'm sick when I love you. I'm sorry, I'm sick when I love not on you. <laughs> <laughs> Hast thou the flower there? Aye, there it is. I pray thee, give it me. I know a western bank where the wild time blows. There sleeps Titania sometime in the night. I'll streak her eyes with it and make her full of hateful fantasies. Take thou some of it. In this grove, a sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth, and all his eyes would do it, and the next thing he aspires may be the lady. Fear not, my lord. Your servant shall do so. <laughs> Come, now round down the fairy song. he doth wear. This is he my master said. Churl, upon thy eyes I throw all the power this charm doth owe. Stay, though thou kill me, Sir Demetrius. I charge you, hence do not love me thus. Oh, I am out of breath in this fond chase. Lysander, on the ground! Lysander, if you live, good sir, awake! And I will run through fire for thee, sweet sake. Oh, where is Demetrius? Oh, how fit a word to perish on my sword. Do not say to Lysander, Hermia still loves you. Then be content. Content with Hermia? I do repent these tedious minutes I have spent. Not Hermia, but Helen I love. Will not change a raven for a dove. Wherefore was I to this keen mockery born? Or that a lady of one man refused? should have another, therefore be abused. All my powers address your love and might to honor Helen to be her knight. Thank you. 
It's gone too far. You're like 19. I don't want to work. But you have to. You can't live with your mom. Are we all dead? <laughs> Here's a marvelous convenient place for a rehearsal. We will do it in action as we shall do it before the Duke. Peter Quince, there are things in this comedy of Pumas and Bisbee that will never please. First, Pumas must draw a sword to kill himself, which the ladies cannot abide. I will give you a sleep of killing out. Write me a prologue and let the prologue seem to say that we will do no harm with our swords and that Pyramus is not killed indeed. Well, we shall have such a prologue. Mm -hmm. Well, ladies, you have a lion. To bring in a lion among ladies is a most dreadful thing. Therefore, the prologue must tell. I am not lying. Nay, you must name his name and tell them plainly. He is Snug the Joiner. Well, it shall be so. But there is two hard things. That is, to bring the moonlight into a chamber, for, you know, Hermes and Thisbe to meet by moonlight. Stop the moon shining that night forever. Then there is another thing. We must have a wall in the great chamber. For Pyramus and Thisbe, who says the story, did talk through the chink of a wall. Some man or other must present walls! <laughs> if that may be, then all is well. Come, sit down and rehearse your parts. Pyramus, you begin. <coughs> Against me for your merriment. You were unkind, Demetrius. Be not so, feel Permia. 
Let's hurt her. Keep that hermit's air. I loved her. All that love is gone. Lysanto, why unkindly didst thou leave me so? Why seek thou me? The hate I bear made me leave thee so. It cannot be! Aha! Lo! She is one of this confederacy. Now I perceive they have conjoined all three to fashion this false court. <laughs> Injurious, Hermia. I scorn you not. It seems that you scorn me. Have you not set last in the me and praise my eyes? And set your other love Demetrius to call me goddess, named divine? I understand not what you mean by this. I do persevere, counterfeit sad lux. Say, gentle Helena. I say I love thee more than you can do. Hang off, thou cat, thou burr. Why are you grown so rude? It is just that I hate thee and love Helena. Oh, me! You thief of love! What, have you come by night and stolen my love to her for me? Fie, fie, you counterfeit! You puppet! You puppet! Thou painted maple! Let her not hurt me! <laughs> Be not afraid, she shall not harm thee, Helena. No, she shall not. Though she be but little, she is fierce! Let me come to her! Get gone, you door! <gasps> Lysander, speak not of Helena like that. shall have Jill, not shall go ill. Now thou and I are new in amity. Come, my love, and in our sight. Come, the cows, and in the sight. 
Good morrow. How comes this junk, gentle concord in the world, to sleep by hate and fear no enmity? My lord, I swear I cannot truly say how I came here. I came here with Kermit, till there are intentions to be gone from Athens. Enough! I beg the law upon your head. You would have stolen away. I know not by what stuff and what love to her to hurt me up. All the, all the love and pleasure of mine eye is gone and melted as the snow. Of this discourse we will more here anon. By and by these couples shall be eternally knit.
surgeon, he might yet recover and prove an ass. <laughs> what? Dead? My dove? Oh, here, miss. Come, trusty sword. Thank you. Don't me dead. Adieu, adieu, adieu. Stab. The lion is left to bury the dead. Will it please you to see the epilogue? No epilogue, I pray you. For your play needs no excuse. The iron tongue of midnight hath told twelve. Lovers to bed. Tis almost fairy time. Robin shall restore amends. 